What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So here we are, another year, another new iPhone. This time around, we get a relatively incremental upgrade from the iPhone 10 we saw last year. It is an S year, but for this release, we also get a bigger version of the phone. Not a plus, but a max. This is, of course, the new iPhone 10s Max. The latest and greatest, and also most expensive iPhone that Apple has ever released, coming in at $1,100 for the one I have here, the 64 gigabyte version of the phone, all the way up to nearly $1,500 for the 512 gigabyte model. Is it worth that insane price tag? Probably not, but let's unbox it anyway and see what we get for all that money. The unboxing experience here is pretty much the same story that we see with nearly every iPhone. Ripping off the plastic wrap and pulling off the lid reveals the very familiar designed by Apple and California text on a packet that holds a bunch of paperwork. You get a short user guide with some basic instructions, a SIM ejector tool, lots of legal info, and of course we can't forget about the Apple stickers. With all that junk tossed aside, here is the new iPhone 10s Max in all its glory. And I have to be honest here, I'm someone who loves big phones, so this is the one I've been waiting for. We'll power it up here and let it do its thing. And at this point, I'd usually just gloss over the rest of the stuff in the box, but like everyone else, I really have to call Apple out on their BS here. Why are we still getting slapped with a tiny five watt USB power brick? It's so ridiculous. These phones support USB-C fast charging now. And this was the same story with last year's iPhone 10. It's time that Apple ditched the five watt adapter, ditched the regular lightning cable, and just shipped the phones with USB-C fast charging. Also, we get the same lightning AirPods, not a big deal, but Apple has stopped in including the lightning to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack adapter. That's so painful. Tons of people still have regular headphones. I still have pairs of regular headphones I wanna use. There's no reason to not include a super inexpensive dongle. That's just an unnecessary inconvenience. Okay, so done with all the rants for now, let's go ahead and check out the phone. And you can see right away, we get a very familiar design. On the surface, the iPhone 10s is nearly identical to the iPhone 10 from last year with the 10s Max here obviously being quite a bit bigger. 5.8 inch display on last year's iPhone 10 and this year's iPhone 10s, and a 6.5 inch display on the 10s Max, and that's the biggest display we've ever gotten. Like I said earlier, I'm pretty excited about that. I always use the Plus devices, and while I got used to the smaller form factor of the iPhone 10 from last year, using a Note 9 and even a Galaxy S9 Plus made my iPhone 10 feel quite small, so it's about time Apple pushed the limits on the display and gave us something like this. Aside from the bigger display, the rest of the phone has a nearly identical design and form factor as last year. Apple seemed like they were trying to cleverly hide the notch this year with that default wallpaper, but don't let that fool you, it is still there. The only way to really tell the difference between last year's phone and this year's is near the camera. The 10s has an ever so slightly different camera module shape that's mostly apparent when an iPhone 10 case is on the new phone. You can kind of see a little bit of a gap. And down at the bottom, you have an uneven speaker design on the new phone because of an additional antenna band towards the left. So if someone is trying to sell you what looks to be like a new iPhone 10s, look down at the bottom and make sure those speaker cutouts aren't even on both sides and you'll know for sure. The other thing to note is that this year we do get a new color option, gold. We saw this same color with the iPhone 8 of course, but it never did make it to the iPhone 10 last year. It's that very soft muted gold that looks more tan than anything else, and you get a slightly deeper gold with the aluminum edges there on the phone too, which looks really nice. Because this is an S year, most of the changes and upgrades will be found with the internals and the software. We get some camera improvements, as we always do, with most notably more options when it comes to portrait mode and bokeh effects, and those can now be adjusted manually after a picture is taken. There's also upgraded internal hardware, 4GB of RAM, the A12 Bionic chip, and a next-gen neural engine, which should all make the phone feel even faster and snappier than before. We also get slightly better battery life and quicker wireless charging times, an IP68 waterproof rating up from IP67, and quicker face ID, which is a welcome change, and that's something I'm really interested to put to the test in the coming days. All in all, I will say that if you already have an iPhone 10, unless you desperately want a larger screen, screen with the 10s Max, this year's phones probably aren't worth the upgrade for you. But nonetheless, I'm still excited to use this new phone over the next couple of weeks to put it to the test and to make some comparisons to the likes of the Note 9 and some other devices. And if there's anything else you guys want to see in particular with this new iPhone 10s Max, let me know down in the comments below. Also, be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.